everybody, welcome back. We're looking at some brides that got caught cheating. Ain't no decency left in the world, I'm telling you. Except for Baby Shark, he's the only person I can trust. Right, Baby Shark? You shouldn't trust me. I'll probably eat you when I get bigger. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> the day I caught my fiance cheating two days before our wedding. So I've told this story on Reddit a few times, but I figured this subreddit is the obvious place to get it out of my system. For reference, I'm now 31, but this happened in 2014 when I was 26 and my ex-fiance was 25. F, let's call her Barb. Yes, let's. We met in college and dated for three years prior to our engagement with a wedding date booked by the fourth year. Neither of our parents were well off financially and she was attending grad school. So the financial responsibility fell on me, which totaled $20,000 that was paid in full four days prior to the wedding. Leading up to that nightmare of an evening, we had our typical mid twenties relationship issues with bouts of poor communication, excessive drinking on weekends, and an occasional fight over trivial BS. Aside from that, we had a great relationship and spent a ton of time together figuring out post-college life and planning for our future. As I said above, the wedding and reception venue cashed my check four days before the wedding, and the contract stated that this was non-refundable. Over 120 guests were confirmed, a couple dozen from out of state, tuxes and bridesmaids dresses were fitted and paid and everything was falling into place. Now let's go to the inevitable storm of events that you're interested in before I keep rambling. It's your mane. Can you scratch it? Aw, thanks bestie. I'm just hungry and I wanted a taste. <laughs> The night in question was a Friday evening in our new apartment that we moved into a few weeks prior. And we decided to have about a dozen friends over to pregame and head out to the bars in town. Included in this group of friends was my buddy, whom I've known since kindergarten. We'll call him Ricky. Ricky and Barb, eh? Arr, Ricky and Barb. Barb and I, <laughs> Barb, but make it Canadian. Barb and I <laughs> had spent a lot of time with Ricky over the last three years, and he was definitely one of her favorite one of my pals, which is generally awesome when your significant other gets along with people in your social circle. The night started at a local hookah lounge that was BYOB. So by the time we left there, a one fifth of Jameson and a 30 rack of Ying Yingling were gone and everyone was buzzed. The next three hours were spent between two to three bars that resulted in the entire group devolving into a drunken belligerent mess. <laughs> All right, sounds kind of fun, but also dangerous. Once the bars closed, most people went home with the exception of myself, Barb, Ricky, and another couple who came back to our apartment for a nightcap. Once back at our place, the couple only lasted another 20 minutes before calling it and making their way home. So I was left with Barb and frickin' Ricky. Earlier in the night at the hookah bar, I noticed Barb checking her phone more than usual and simultaneously Ricky checking his phone after she would lock the screen. I almost put two and two together, but why would I worry about them planning anything shady two days before I was supposed to marry this girl? Back at my house, I was barely sober and noticed all the booze was gone. So I was contemplating picking up a couple of six packs from a local spot that stayed open until 3 a.m. Barb and Ricky were definitely on the liquor and tanked, but there was no reason to suspect anything sketchy would occur if I ran out for 20 minutes. Once in my car and preparing to exit my apartment complex, I got a sinking feeling in my gut that something wasn't right and it completely freaked me out. So I called my best bud and he agreed to be picked up and join me on the beer run and accompany me back to the apartment. After grabbing some bud heebies and returning home, we walked up to the sliding glass door that led to my living room that had a sectional to the immediate right. We opened the door, took two steps inside the apartment, and my ex-fiance was completely topless and mounted on Mr. Ricky, tonsil deep down each other's throats. The amazing part of the situation was neither of them appeared to notice that my buddy and I were 10 feet away watching their sloppy, drunken escapades. After seven to 10 seconds of attempting to comprehend the situation, I lost it. I dropped the booze, threw her backward off Ricky, completely topless, and landed two hard right hooks to Ricky's eye and cheek while he was still laying on his back with the most terrified look on his face. To put things into perspective, I'm six foot and 220 pounds, and I've played hockey my entire life. He is 5'6", 140 pounds, and a runner. Immediately following the assault with my fist, Ricky started snoring. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Sorry, didn't know this was a thing. And was asleep for at least five minutes while I was losing my mind <laughs> over the situation. Wait, wait, he fell asleep? He passed out? What? Without thinking, I called our parents about 10 times until they woke up and demanded they come to pick up their cheating daughter immediately. Their house was five minutes down the road, so they walked in shortly thereafter while I was laying into Barb about her unforgivable, disgusting decision. As you should, Bessie. Her parents frantically walked into me, screaming at Barb and Ricky, 
ass out on the couch and my buddy mediating the situation. The first thing I told everyone was the wedding was off. I demanded the ring back and I said I'd rather lose $20,000 than spend the rest of my life with a cheating B word. Her parents spent the next 20 minutes attempting to talk me out of it and occasionally defending Barb's actions, saying things like, why can't you forgive her or isn't it too late to cancel the wedding? Meanwhile, Ricky woke up and the right side of his face had swollen to the size of a grapefruit and his left eye was completely shut. Kicking him out of the apartment was tough because he was too drunk to drive. So I called his brother that was 20 minutes away and spent that time laying into Barb, Ricky and her parents. Surprisingly, I was able to stay level-headed enough to express my thoughts in such an extreme state of rage. By the time Ricky's brother picked him up and Barb's parents shuttled her home, I had systematically picked apart any objection, opinion or plea for reconsideration expressed by everyone in the room. It felt really great. I love that for you. I know it's not happening to me, but if it was, I'd be proud. I'm not going to pretend the following months were easy and everything worked out in my favor. Two months later, the pharma company I worked at decided to lay off my entire division. I had racked up thousands in credit card debt to pay for the wedding, unemployment haunted me for five months, and I was diagnosed with major depression. Life was effed up for a few years and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But now I'm 31 and things have settled down and I couldn't be happier. Thank you for letting me get this off my chest. You know what? Thank you for sharing. That's super messed up. What I don't understand is in that moment why everybody was trying to get you to change your mind. Once a cheater, always a cheater. I also don't understand the sheer stupidity of hooking up with someone when your fiance is gonna be back in a few minutes from getting liquor. Are you stupid or something? I think you made the right decision. Cheating sucks. It sucks to uh, break up with somebody, but like realistically, you're never gonna be able to look at her the same way again. Like not only did she cheat, but she cheated on you two days before her wedding. That's literally unforgivable. Bride demands bridesmaids return the pre-wedding gifts she gave them after her wedding was canceled because she was cheating. Am I the a-hole for not returning my bridesmaid gifts after the wedding was canceled? Hello everyone, I'm 27 female. My friend Jessica, 28 female, was supposed to get married over the summer. She asked me and a few of our other friends to be her bridesmaids by giving us gift boxes with thanks for the bachelorette party, which is gonna be a long weekend in Mexico. Three of us are nurses, two are teachers, we're all vaccinated. The box had sunglasses, a bathing suit, shoes, some jewelry, a water bottle, and a tote bag in it. They were really nice. Well, Jessica's fiance got a call from her boyfriend and the wedding was called off. Neither one of them knew about each other. We were all just as blindsided as he was. We had no idea. Jessica recently contacted me to tell me that the trip isn't happening. She wants the bridesmaids gifts back. Why though? Just need some, some extra sunglasses. Maybe you're running out of tote bags. You're kind of low key punishing the people that were supposed to be at your wedding. But it's your fault, I don't get it. I guess some of the girls hadn't taken any of the stuff out, so they just gave them back, but I took the stuff out. I used the tote bag and the sunglasses already, and after I had tried on the bathing suit, I cut the tags off. When I told Jessica I had assumed this stuff was a gift, so I had already used some of it, she got really mad and said I should have saved it for the trip and that I had to reimburse her for the price of all the stuff. You know, I would call you a bridezilla, but you kind of fed that up, didn't you? <laughs> Had to. I was gonna do it just to get her off my back, but then I found out when I was hanging out with her ex one day that she wasn't the one that bought the things in the boxes. He was! Shut up! No! Oh, man. So I asked him if he wanted me to reimburse him and he said no, and that it's just a drop in the bucket of all the money he's down from the wedding. And the extra $275 won't really make any difference. I'm not really worried about losing my friendship with Jessica. I think what she did to her fiance says a lot about her character, but I know her and the maid of honor, her sister, are talking a lot of in the group chat that I'm stealing from Jessica. Am I the a-hole? Stealing is an interesting choice of words considering she's not the one that paid for it, yet she's the one demanding to be paid back. No, you're not the a-hole. You're not. I'd keep that all the way. <laughs> Must've been a really nice tote bag. <laughs> The wedding hasn't even happened yet and everything's already a train wreck. Now this one's a long one now, buckle up. Okay, so this girl I know from high school is getting married. We're both 22 for reference. In our senior year of high school, she got pregnant with baby daddy A, who will be referred to as Adam. Hi, Adam. 
Her super conservative parents kicked her out and she ended up moving in with a friend's family. She barely graduated high school. The only reason she did was because of the generosity and support of our teachers and students who volunteered to help her, which is how we met. We were in the same law class in the morning and she had the worst morning sickness that really affected her ability to be in class. So I took extra notes for her, tutored her and brought her her stuff if she hadn't come back by the bell. I wasn't the only one who did stuff like this for her and I know she really appreciates all the assistance we gave her. She had the baby a month after we graduated. She signed up for a 911 dispatcher course for after high school because where we live, it's a good steady job with opportunity for certificates and promotions. But she didn't realize how intensive the course would be and had to drop out. She started working at a grocery store bakery just until she had a better plan. Adam started an apprenticeship while working part-time at a hockey rink and proposed to her literally the day of her 18th birthday and brought up marriage because it's the right thing to do. I don't really agree with that, but this isn't about me and she was always refusing. She started cheating on him after a while. We're all 19 now and eventually leaves him for another guy because she's pregnant again. And it's far more likely that this guy, baby daddy B, who will be referred to as Brad, is the father of the child. Neither of them can afford lawyers. So getting any kind of custody agreement is a mess. And then their parents got involved and they did a 50-50 split. Still not made official. She has the baby that does turn out to be Brad's and everything's okay for about nine months. When she finds out Brad had been cheating on her with his TA. I know it's a long one, but I'm invested. Are you guys invested? Brad decides to pay child support, but doesn't really want contact with the kid, only around holidays and one weekend a month for his parents' sake. She moves back in with her parents, we're all 20 now, who only accept her back because there's grandchildren around. On the plus side, when she's 21, she gets to take that year-long dispatcher course and passes with flying colors. After working as a dispatcher for a year, we're all 22 now, she meets a police officer, we'll call Chad, who's 26 and married. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. And Adam's second cousin. I can't remember how they're related, just that Adam and Chad are related somewhat distantly. <laughs> She has an affair with him. Infidelity is super common among cops, apparently. She gets knocked up, his wife divorces him. Chad proposes because it's the right thing to do. She accepts and her parents kick her out again for being a insert expletive here. She moves in with Chad with her two kids. They've started planning the wedding, which given the background is something akin to a dumpster fire. Adam is livid. He was desperately in love with his girl and hasn't really recovered from what she did to him. And while she rejected his proposals years ago, she accepted one from his cousin who proposed for the same reason he did. I mean, circumstances have kind of changed, if you know what I mean. Now she's got like two babies, another one on the way. It just kind of makes sense. <laughs> Adam has basically made a call for loyalty in the family, dividing everyone who should go, who should give money, etc. Plus they're having trouble planning anything because of COVID. Her parents have outright said they're not going, along with half of her family and her younger sister has been going around sabotaging what plans they can make. She asked me to be a bridesmaid. I said that I couldn't because I live in a different province now. But the truth is, I don't want to be wrapped up in that cluster in any way. <laughs> I'm just watching the arguments and events unfold on social media because this is quite honestly the most entertaining thing I've seen all year. <laughs> It's weird to me that she even asked because we're not friends. We never have been. We were friendly strangers in high school. I just helped her out for one class because she needed help and I could give it to her. I was just being nice. But based on how she turned out, I'm just sad for her. Three kids in four years and she's alienated so much of her friends and family because of her actions. And I'm torn between feeling sorry for her and putting my head in my hands. Honestly, that's way too long of an update that I can't even read. Honestly, I could do an entire video on this whole story. Maybe we should do that. Keep you guys invested. Do you want a part two? Let me know. Subscribe!